Hi, my name is Bob Brooks. I'm a psychologist at Harvard Medical School and uh, today I presented at one of my favorite conferences, Plain Talk. And my talk really focused on this concept of mindsets. And I really spoke about how do you create a positive mindset in a school where staff want to be and where students want to be and where you really touch the hearts and soul of students. And I mentioned that many theories of mindset really focus on achievement and you know doing well in a test. But my area of interest is how you really help kids to create positive emotions in a classroom. And there's a psychologist, Sean Aker, who said it's important to create positive emotions with a sense of meaning and purpose so that people in that environment will really want to be there. So I mentioned a few key points. One is I told the educators that research about resilience, which is another one of my favorite areas, what helps kids to rebound from adversity, shows that one of the most important things to help people who have experienced adversity as a child, one of the most important things to help them to be resilient is to have at least one adult in their lives who truly believes in them and stands by them. And the late Julia Siegel, a psychologist, called that person a charismatic adult in a child's life. And I love his definition. He says, a charismatic adult is an adult from whom a child or adolescent gathers strength. And he ended that sentence by saying, in a surprising number of cases, the charismatic adult in a child's life turns out to be a teacher. So I really wanted to emphasize to all the educators, even one small thing you say or do with a child may make the world of difference. And then I, I mentioned a few key things that we help kids with having this positive emotion. One is to help every child feel welcome in the classroom. And when I did some research and asked kids what helps them to feel welcome, they gave such simple I examples like greet me by name or a smile. So I, I told the group, you know, it's really the simplest things that start a connection with a student. And once you have the connection, students are going to be more willing to learn from you. I talked about the fact that students will be more willing to learn if they feel they're active participants, that we should give them some choices there. Uh, I advocated, based on research, to have them attend parent-teacher conferences, even for just a brief amount of time. One of the things I also talked a lot about is, I said, what holds a lot of students back is the fear of mistakes or really humiliation. So I gave some examples of how it's like a raging elephant, this fear of humiliation in a classroom. And I said one of the best ways to get rid of it is for you to openly discuss it. And I, I gave the example of sometime in class, just say to students who thinks they're going to make a mistake and not understand something in the class. And before any child could raise his or her hand, you raise yours and share with kids about a time you may have been embarrassed when you were growing up in school, and then turn it into problem solving. What could I do as your teacher? What could you do as class? And don't be afraid to make a mistake. And I, I emphasize, when you really lessen the fear of mistakes, fewer discipline problems, better attendance, because kids are not as scared. And two other main points I made. One is, I say so often, when kids are having trouble, we look at what they can't do. And I, it's more than 30 years ago, I started to use a phrase or a metaphor called islands of competence. And I said, we all have these strengths, beauty, these islands of competence. And I said, we've got to really discover what they are. And I said, one of my dreams is to go to school, each child's name would be listed, and next to it would be their strength or island of competence, and then how are we using it in the school. You know, sometimes it's easy to figure out if a child has trouble reading but is a great artist, you know, you could display their artwork. But kids are more likely to feel a positive emotion when they feel people are recognizing really their, you know, strengths. And the last main point I emphasized is one based on research I had uh, done one years ago when I was writing a book about school climate. I asked 1,500 adults to look back at their childhood what was one of the best memories they have of school, something an adult in the school said it did that boosted their dignity and the motivation. And the number one res positive response I got was when they were asked to help out. Like, I remember when a teacher asked me to pass out the milk and straws. I remember when a teacher asked me to tutor a younger child. And I said, see, this is what brings a sense of purpose or meaning. If a child goes into school and feels, hey, because I'm at the school, the school is a better place, they're less likely tacked up, they're more likely to learn. 
And I gave you know examples where kids were involved in committees, where kids were tutoring younger kids. And I said, make a list of the students, and just like you have their island of competence, next to it also put what that student would say he or she contributes to the school building. So when you take all of these things, what you've done is to create a positive mindset where students are going to be more receptive to learn, where they really know you care about them. And you know, I often say to the teachers, kids don't care what you know until they first know you care. So the relationship is the first thing one should really start focusing on. And uh, it was a wonderful audience, very attentive, and I enjoyed presenting those ideas.